yeah, I've got a couple recipes tonight. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to jump back and forth on them. Um, first recipe I'm going to talk about is hummus. And generally, who, uh, anyone ever eat hummus? Generally, it's made with garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Um, just like anything else that gets popular, there's different kinds of hummus now. I don't know if classically or traditionally what I'm doing can be classified as a hummus, so to say, but I've made hummus out of different legumes or dried beans. Um, tonight I'm using it with lima beans. Um, so I made some up for you all to sample and I'm going to take you through the steps on that. The second recipe I'm making are caprese burgers. Um, she got, oh, two-sided, cool. Um, Caprese generally denotes when you're taking fresh mozzarella cheese, tomatoes, and basil, and olive oil. You know those salads you see, those really nice tasty salads, they're called caprese salads. And that's just in general terms of the region in Italy. So I'm making caprese chicken or turkey burgers, and I'm going to do it with turkey tonight. Um, the recipes I'm doing, a lot of times we do these, they're real specific for diabetes. Uh, we talked about celiac. Um, one of the recipes I'm doing is a celiac recipe because there's no gluten in it. It's the Caprese burger. Well, they're both celiac. Um, but when you're doing celiac um, and you, you really got that disease, what you got to be careful of is cross-contamination. So if I'm using a cutting board, if I'm using a cutting board that has meat on here or if I put a piece of bread on there and then all of a sudden I go to cut a vegetable on there, I've contaminated that product for that celiac and they can't eat it if they have a high disease of it. Now, about 25 years ago, I went through some classes and I learned about kosher cooking. Kosher cooking, they keep all their cutting boards separate, all their pans are separate, their plates are separate, and that kind of cooking goes back and it's not about disease or it's not really about your health and wellness, it's um, more religious. Um, but that kind of cooking, if she was in a kosher kitchen and I was doing a celiac menu, she would probably be okay because I would move from different cutting boards and this bowl would only be for vegetables. You wouldn't put proteins in it and cross over. So a lot of the diseases and ways we cook today, um, you know, what, how we're cooking today lent to people's health and the, uh, some diseases that they will have. Um, but none of these menus are true celiac menus unless they cooked them at home. So the reason why the turkey burger um, or chicken burger, it's just there's no gluten in it. So it's just taken it away. If you want it on a bun, you can use like a rice bun or something like that. The lima bean hummus. Um, what I did, I'm using frozen lima beans, but you can take lima beans and cook them from scratch as you normally would. With the frozen lima beans though, I, I put them on just as you guys were breaking back there, so they're just about ready to go. You want to cook them off a little bit. They're already pre-cooked, so I got them in some water and you drain them out. You just want to cook them and get some of that flavor coming back to them and reconstitute them. And then what I recommend is you kind of steam in. We're going to set those aside for a minute and let the steam come off of that. And we're going to move into the turkey burgers. Now you could use turkey or ground chicken. I got this down at the uh, Food City Meat Department right in back. It's a Genio brand. We also carry our own brand. I chose Jenny O. We carry two kinds. Uh, Food City carries lean turkey burgers, and that's using some of the dark meat. Um, this extra lean uh, is all white meat. It's the breast meat of the turkey. So I chose that um, for health reasons. It's just a lot leaner. Um, it tastes good, too. You can also use ground chicken. If you're going to use ground chicken, we carry the uh, Gerber's ground chicken down there. It's uh, antibiotic and hormone-free. Um, Either one, if you use turkey or chicken, either one will work. It doesn't really matter. Um, and you can always cross over your ingredients. This one calls for taking the, the turkey, placing it in there, and calls for a quarter teaspoon of pepper. So I pre-measured that, and that's for 16 ounces. This is 20 ounces, so I'm probably going to add just a little bit more pepper to it. And it called for a half teaspoon of salt, and I'm using sea salt on that. I'm not going to add any more salt to it, but I'll add just a little touch more pepper. I like the fresh ground pepper like that. Calls for minced garlic. What I did, again, I didn't think you guys needed a demo on how to cut garlic, but I cut the garlic up and minced it really fine. So now I'm going to add that to it. Basil. Got some basil sitting here. I 
advertising our coffee company, but I'm going to just, I uh, got it, it's sitting in water. And just chop some basil up into it. And again, it could be rough cut, it could be minced. If you don't want basil, you could add other ingredients. Does anyone have an herb garden at home? Anyone grow herbs? No one's growing herbs in their garden? Okay. Well, you could grow basil on your windowsill too. I bought these right down in our produce department. Um, but if you want mint, you could add mint to this. I don't know, mint and turkey, you know, if that's really the burger thing you're going for. You can add thyme, you can add rosemary, you can add uh, lemon balm, you could add just about anything you want to it. You could always interchange your recipes. So I got the garlic in there, I've got the basil, I got the pepper, I got the salt, and that's really it. It's, it's a pretty basic recipe. We're going to go ahead and mix it up. Now when you mix this, unlike a, the burgers, like, well, this will be padded into a burger form, but if you're using ground beef, it doesn't, see how this has kind of changed its texture real quick? It's, because it is, it's, it's a poultry, it's not, you know, as coarse as, uh, it doesn't have the fibers going through it that the uh, ground beef will have. Now if you want to grill them at home, you could grill them at home on your grill, you could put them in the oven. I'm going to portion this out. I'm just going to kind of divide it four ways there. Get it close. You could also make little meatballs out of them too. Um, can just, you know, you could add. The thing about these, you don't have to add the egg and the breadcrumbs. You can make these and you could bake them off and then put them in a spaghetti sauce and they're going to hold if you <coughs> pat them like that pretty tight. So if you ever want to make meatballs, go for it. Okay, I'm making three burgers out of this because I didn't really measure too well. We'll even that off. It's just making a burger. Y'all made them at home, but that's the ingredients that go in there. Again, if you want to substitute any ingredient, add the ingredients to it, you know, go for it. Make it your own. You can add, you know, different kinds of sauces to it. You could add hot sauce to it if you like. Again, this is eating light. This is good backyard food or it's even for the winter time. Get those gloves out of there. All right, we're going to put these under the broiler. And Jessica and Audrey back there are going to make sure I don't burn them. Aren't you ladies? Thank you. All right, so those are going to take about 15 minutes in there. I'll flip them once. Now we're going to go back to our hummus. Okay, so we cooked the beans, I let them dry, got a lot of the steam off of there. Still a little bit, but that's okay. Put them in any food processor that you may have. And these ingredients call for a lot of the same stuff. I've got salt going into it, I've got a little cumin, I've got cayenne, we're going to use lemon juice. Oh, what else? We're going to use some basil in it. Oh no, we're going to use mint and cilantro. Do I need to move over there or can you? I'm taking the road show. Okay, so I'm going to, the recipe calls to add your cilantro and your mint last. You could add it at any point in time. So I'm going to show you what happens if you add it in the beginning and then um, what happens in the end when you add it, which you'll be sampling. And there's really not much of a difference except the speckles in it. So what I'm doing though, I'm taking the cilantro, it looks like flat Italian parsley. I am picking the stems off of there, so I'm just getting the leaves. And I love cilantro, it's uh, great to cook with. It's very pungent, very powerful, and it can be overused in an, as an ingredient a lot of times. Um, you're seeing it a lot in southwestern foods. It's actually indigenous to Asia. Something that came over years ago to North America and just kind of got infused into the southwestern cu uh, cooking cuisine. Okay, so now we got some cilantro in there. Got a little bit of mint ready to go. And again, I'm going to take, uh, and you're growing spearmint at home? Oh, you got the spearmint going. Spearmint, yeah, that grows really nice. 
You plant it outside, it'll keep going on you too. Okay, so I got cilantro, I got mint. Now if I wanted to not use cilantro and mint and I wanted to use basil and thyme, that'd be just fine as well. I've got cayenne pepper. I'm going to put cumin in here. I could get rid of these and I could add chili and I could add chili powder or black pepper. You can season this however you want. This is just the route I took tonight on this one. Calls for a quarter teaspoon. And tell me when that's a quarter teaspoon, folks. Somebody, somebody better say something. <laughs> no, this is cumin, don't worry, I'm not, I won't light you up. Um, and then the cayenne pepper, yep, we'll go a little light on that. And I'm also going to put a little black pepper in there. Uh, the degrees of pepper hit your palate at different levels, so if you want a one-dimensional um, dish, you use one kind of pepper. If you want to get it jumping a little bit, you could use different uh, peppers from white pepper to red pepper to black pepper to pink peppercorn. And what you're going to do is you're going to develop a layer of flavorings as the um, pepper hits your palate and works its way back. There, now we got the pepper grinder working. Salt. Anyone opposed to salt? We'll just go light on the salt. You could always add salt. Go with some lemon juice. The recipe calls for the juice of one lemon or half a lemon. Nope, I got one lemon in there. And I always roll the lemon and kind of soften it up a little bit. And it really juices out much nicer for you. Let me do this. Since I'm not being uh, politically correct and using a strainer, I'll put the gloves back on for this. We'll check our turkey burgers in here. Oh yeah, they're starting to cook up pretty good. Oh, I know. Just want to check to make sure I'm not going to burn them. I didn't even time it when I put it in. I'm going to cook by sight anyway. So there you go. They're starting to firm up a little bit too. So they're going to brown up real quick here. I don't want them to get away on me. Okay, so we're going to add our lemon juice, and this is a, such a great recipe, even I do it at home, because it doesn't take a whole lot off the cutting board. Hey, did I add the garlic to that yet? No. I did not add the garlic to it. Should I add garlic to it? Yeah. How much? Oh, we got garlic eaters, huh? Four cloves. Okay, let's talk garlic for a minute. Do I really want to do four? Whoa, four of these cloves? No way. Okay, I, I love, I always cook with elephant garlic. I just love the taste of it. So what I did is I took half of one of these, diced it up, got it minced up really fine, and I'm kind of cross-using it for the recipe. So we'll go with about that much, you think? Y'all good with that? Less, more? All right. See, when I bake, I measure. When I cook, I throw it in there. Okay, now we're going to take the lemon juice and I'm going to do the, strain the seeds through my fingers. It's the best strainer that I've ever found. And I always have it on me. I never have to go looking for it. And I got a lot of juicy seeds right out of that. We'll do the same thing on that. Okay, if I wanted to do black beans in place of this, I could probably do that, couldn't I? I could do northern beans. I could, well, garbanzo beans are what they use. If I use black beans, I'd have really a good, really southwestern kind of dish going automatically with these two ingredients. But I could do black beans with mint in there. I could throw a little bit of tomato in there. You know, you're the chef at home. You could go ahead and, you know, experiment. So I got cilantro. I got mint. I got salt. I got cumin. I got lemon. Missing the olive oil. I got the two peppers. And I'm going to go with extra virgin olive oil, very light. It's comes from the first press of the olive. Sometimes you have to adjust this with water, so I may adjust it with a little warm water as we go. I love that pulse button. Who eats lima beans? Who's going to eat lima beans like this? 
You gonna try them? All right. Well, now you could use this for dips. Um, you could use this as a sandwich spread if you really want to get pretty healthy on things. We'll put a little more olive oil in there. Is it 15 minutes, Audrey? Because I smell my turkey burgers. <laughs> I know you do, but no. Whoa! What a difference a few minutes makes, huh? All right, well, we'll turn them. Yeah, they still need a little time to cook there. And did I put on here cook to at least 165 degrees? Did I write that on the recipe? I hope not. I did? Yeah, who all has thermometers at home to te check temperature? Oh, good. You actually do. Um, when I'm at home, I you know, sometimes use a thermometer. I always use one at work, right, Jess? Um, how I check for poultry is when it bleeds perfectly clear, I know it's done. And this isn't bleeding perfectly clear yet, so we still got a little ways to go, which is good. You said seven minutes? Yeah. Okay, and I killed about a minute and a half talking about this? <laughs> Perfect, so these will be done right on time. Now you could grill those on the grill as well. All right, so what were we working on? We were working on our hummus, weren't we? You want to get that nice and pureed? And then we'll check for the consistency of it. Push some of this around and make sure we get the rest of it. See, this is just a little thick, so I have two options here. I could use more lemon juice, but that's going to alter the flavor a little. Um, we want it to be a little more of a spread. Um, I could add olive oil, which is going to kind of make it a little oily. Um, change the flavor a little bit, I've already because I've already got olive oil in. Or we could just, yeah, did I hear water? Good. It's not going to take much. So we'll just start with that. What we're looking to do, there we go. You can kind of see the mixture moving around, and that's what you want it to do. Before it was just kind of staying, in, staying put. Okay, we'll come back to that. How much time, Audrey? Five more Wait, that was the longest two minutes I ever had. Okay, we're going to keep cooking those on the top shelf, and then I'm going to move them down low there in a minute. All right. So hummus normally made with chickpeas slash garbanzo beans. We use lima beans. Uh, you could use black beans. You can use northern beans. Um, what other beans? Half runner beans? That kind of be a little, eh, I don't think so on that. No, you want to probably use the dry legumes. Um, you can use lentils if you wanted to use lentils or split peas. Kidneys. Kidney beans would be great, yeah. Pinto beans. So again, really this is just a spread. Um, traditional hummus has uh, either sesame oil and or tahini, which is sesame seeds. It's a paste. Um, I've got the other ingredients in there. They're the prime ingredients of garlic, lemon juice, and olive oil, um, and a bean. So that's our, um, the hummus. You can serve it with crackers. You can serve it with a vegetable dip, or you can use it as a spread. I made this earlier. You guys will sample this in a minute. So it's a nice little party dish. What I've got over here are whole grain crackers, since we're on the whole grain talking about that. And I've got some gluten-free. Uh, crackers here. They have different flavors down there. These are their standard ones. This is uh, made with rice flour. Um, again, if you got intolerance to uh, gluten, they're, they, they're actually pretty good crackers. Um, years ago, you couldn't get 
you know, when they first came out with sugar-free stuff, it didn't taste too good, fat-free stuff, but now a lot of the stuff, you know, eats pretty well. Those crackers aren't, aren't bad for uh, being gluten-free. Is it time yet, Audrey? Is it time? Three minutes. Ooh, I might be on the money there because they're starting to brown up on that side. All right. So now we're going to want to garnish off our turkey burgers. Out with the old and in with the new. There we go. Okay. Fresh mozzarella cheese. Does anyone need fresh mozzarella cheese? Till the year about 1925, 1930, most of the pizza places in the United States made their pizzas with fresh mozzarella cheese. And then it became so commercialized, they couldn't keep up with the production of fresh mozzarella cheese. They started using the uh, processed mozzarella or the the dried mozzarella cheese. So this is what they used to make pizzas with. Um, we carry a few different brands. This is Bel Gioioso. Um, they're an Italian family that has uh, makes cheese in California and Wisconsin. It's the number one um, fresh mozzarella cheese in the nation. Uh, I've been to the plant. It's really cool how they make it. Uh, we carry different varieties. This is the log. This is the traditional size. This is around and then pre-sliced. So I'm going to show you what the pre-slice looks like. Um, it comes ready to go, ready to work for you. No, this is the pre-sliced. So you can't even tell until you really look at it. Um, same thing. It's the same exact cheese. This just gets uh, cut at the manufacturer. It's wire cut. It's kind of piano wires cut through that. But if you ever want to buy this, any of this will work for you. And again, caprese denotes basil, tomatoes, and olive oil, and fresh mozzarella cheese. So what I'm going to do for this, and I washed my tomatoes earlier, I'm just going to take a few slices. Is it seven minutes yet, Audrey? Oh, um, <laughs> we got the countdown. I guess I got to look up to see if the uh, silver ball is going to start falling. Okay, we'll cut a few tomatoes here. What do you know? It worked, huh? Wow. Guess I earned my dollar today. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about the carryover cooking? Okay, now I'll just pop this uh, easy open, easy seal cheese. And I'll cut some of this, I'll, I'll cut some of that, lay it out, and you guys try some of this just on its own if you have never tried it. It's non-pasteurized, it's a fresh cheese, tastes delicious. It goes with just about anything. It complements what you put with it, um, basically. And man, if you want to melt it on a pizza, that pizza will, uh, it's unbelievable. It's stringy cheese, really good. Okay, so to build the Caprese burger, we're not going to use a bun tonight, um, but you can use a gluten-free type of bun or you can even use a wrap. So we'll take one of these. Take a big old Caprese Juicy Burger. Probably take a little bit of fresh basil since that's in the ingredients already. Can kind of put that there. We got a nice cheese. Can kind of go like that with it. Or should I go like that? What do you guys want? You care? <laughs> you don't care, do you? <laughs> just like, just put it on there. I want to eat. <laughs> And then what I'm using, I'm going to use a little bit of basil on it. Um, basil, this is uh, real Italian. You all have basil or pesto before? It's made with pesto, olive oil. Um, this is made with pine nuts. In some regions, they will use walnuts with it. Um, and garlic is in here. And then you can just put a little dab on there. And that's good summer eating, healthy eating, caprese burger. If you want, you could get a gluten-free 
or a whole grain bun and put it on like that. Then you got your little salad there. The spread with the lima beans. You can use your whole grain crackers. And I just picked the glutinos. Um, we've got other gluten-free crackers down there if anyone is interested in them. They're in our uh, gluten-free aisle. There's a large selection of products there. And then you can eat this with uh, chip, uh, any kind of chips, dips, um, or um, vegetables. And we got some vegetables back there. We're going to get that kind of set back there. You guys can start with that. And then I'm going to finish off. I got some little samples of these burgers, some bite-sized samples that we're going to put together for you.